alive and spooky. But before we do, there's just time to look at tomorrow's highlights here on Channel One. At 10 a.m., we continue our series on household budgeting, The Lady Balances, where Valerie Sellery's got her hands full with a difficult ledger. Mid-afternoon, viewers can join Adrian Atkinson Blimey on a tour of another of the country's great buildings in Adrian's Architects. And let's not forget our late evening film tomorrow night, Schrodinger's Cravat, a tale of the forbidden love between a mathematician and a costumier set in the early 1800s. Not one to miss. That's just some of tomorrow's treats here on Channel One. But now, without further ado, it's time to turn out the lights. All right, Wayne, we're going live at five. As we pass the airwaves over to our paranormal. Are you receiving me, Wayne? Can you hear that? That is the sound of fate. Have you ever heard fate creep up behind you with a dagger in its back and a hand of leer on its lips? I have. Good evening, my friends, both in this realm and in the next. Tonight we've come to a wretched place to uncover a dangerous case. Welcome to the Bannon Sound Stage. Once a thriving studio at the forefront of innovation until tragedy. A horrifying accident. A devastating fire and finally death itself. Join me, Wayne, the spirit whistle, spiritual medium, psychic communicator, lover, as I attempt to uncover the dark truth into grey and Infamous chaos show tonight on live and spooky. Features a very special guest, journalist, broadcaster, and all round truth seeker, Patrick Bannon. Good evening, Wayne. You excited to join us tonight? I'm excited, Wayne. I can't say I'm excited about all this dust, though. It plays havoc with my allergies. Now, Patrick. Oh, what's that, love? Oh, my, my, Patrick. I'm hearing from the spirit world. I'm hearing something that might shake your world to its very foundation. Is it true that you are, in fact, the one and only son of Graham Bannon? Well, yeah. I mean, everyone knows that. Yeah. <laughs> but you have a reading is off the charts. And, of course, we're joined, as usual, by our paranormal investigator and supernatural scientist, Dr. Ahmed. Excuse me, Dr. Ahmed. What is an EMF? Oh, <laughs> Forgive me, Mr. Bannon, I'm so sorry. Sometimes I forget that not everyone is as well versed in the terminology as myself and Mr. De Spirit Whistle here. So, EMF stands for Electric Magnetic Field. Essentially, it is a measurable energy signature given off by all forms of spectral phenomena. Mm -hmm. And that thing being off the charts, is that, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing for us? Well, I mean... Higher tends to mean that there is either a stronger presence or even multiple presence. 
Mm. <laughs> and of course, seeing that we're in the business of hunting goes, I say yes, it's definitely a good thing. Thank mm. you. Words to trust there, uh, Mr. Bannon. Our doctor here is the foremost expert in metaphysical science. What do you have for us this evening, Pet? Well, I've actually stumbled onto something of a breakthrough here, Wayne. <laughs> I've managed to actually expand the light spectrum visible to the human eye by refracting it through a specially vibrated glass prism. This cutting-edge technology actually allows us to see into the spirit world. Ah, yes! Let's get the ghost cam switched on! ...oscillating optoelectronics. Oh! Ah! What was that for? Branching, oscillating, octahedral, optoelectronics. Oh, yes, exactly. That's what I said. <laughs> but of course, I do need a shorter name for that now, don't I? Oh! Ah! Please stop doing that. Yes, Mr. Banner, please do stop scaring poor Dr. Ahmed. Please continue, Doctor. Thank you, Mr. De Spirit Whistle. So, tonight, we will be utilising my standard surveillance kit, which, of course, includes night vision capabilities. Should we come into any problematic darkness, let's say? Oh, and additionally, I have taken the liberty of installing my branching up um, new devices all over the building. Tonight, we might actually be able to broadcast the image of a ghost for the very first time. Oh, exciting stuff, now. And now, Patrick, your father built this place at the height of his illustrious career. That's right. The year was 1956. Hot off his success in music hall venues and comedy clubs around the country, Graham Bannon suddenly produces a TV script. A script that blows the mind of studio execs and leaves them scrapping over who will get to make it. It was called Dying is Another Man's Job and starred Graham as a daring do-gooder, Percival Peril. It was set to be a tour de force for your father, launching him to superstardom. Ah, but it was to be the start of something much more sinister. Three disasters struck, each more calamitous than the last. And shortly after the tragic events, that shortly after his very baby, Graham Bannon suddenly disappeared from the limelight, never to be seen in public again. It broke him. This place, the curse, my father had it all. Charm, talent, the weaselish good looks of a meerkat or some sort of stoked animal. But fate came in and cruelly stole it all away. Uh, built in 57, the Bannon soundstage was to be the home of a brand new televisual sensation of a scale never seen on our screens before. For that damned woman. Ah! The spirit! Doomed to roam the wings and the halls forevermore. An unfortunate accident, a raging inferno, and a tragic loss of life. Left these walls cursed forever. Of course, production was shut down following Marie Murphy's mysterious passing. And since then, there have been misguided attempts to make use of this very building. None survived. What? Succeeded. None succeeded. Sorry, succeeded. Uh, we'll investigate those tales as we delve deep into the ruins of this once flourishing enterprise. <gasps> oh, wait, wait. Who's there? A spirit. A spirit beckons. <gasps> we can test out the branching octahedral oscillating optoelectronics. Boom. <laughs> Any second now, the script calls for them to go to the costume room first. So when the button lights up, hit the coat hanger button and lock that. Everyone, Any moment now, hey, speak to me, Lord. Oh my, oh my goodness. Costume was created. It was the home to the late costume designer Marie Murphy. 
one of the suspects in this insidious mystery. And, most terrifying of all, it contains dangerous amounts of noxious fabric. First stop, the wardrobe department. Why is it you think the spirits brought us here first? Well, makes a lot of sense, Wayne. Many people would say that this is where the accident was caused. But that injured stuntman, Brent Backflip. That's exactly right. Well, say more, say more. Well, wouldn't you like to point fingers, Wayne? But if I were going to, and I am going to, I'd point all eight of mine and my thumbs squarely at Marie Murphy. The costume designer. The very same. In this room, Wayne. At that desk, probably, she sat there making the costumes for the show. The costume with a harness that failed and plunged an innocent man to his death. Brent Backflip didn't die, though, did he? Well, he, he? He didn't die, no, no, no. But the saying plunge to his death sounds better than saying plunge to multiple comminuted fractures. And what do you think happened to the harness, Patrick? Well, I wouldn't like to speculate, Wade. But if I were going to, and I am going to, I'd say poor workmanship. Laziness, foolhardiness. Basically, she dropped the ball. And the ball was a man. Such a small thing can have dire consequences. A seemingly insignificant thing like the costume girl can mean life or death. Absolutely. Look, look, we all make mistakes. But sometimes mistakes cost lives. Or in this case, legs. We have Dally Patrick, the dead. Age us forward. Give us a sigh. Do you hear that, Patrick? Yeah, I, I can hear something, actually. Sounds to me like an old song, probably from the show itself. You're right. It's the theme tune to Dad's old show. He used to hum it all the time while he was reading and then burning all of his fan mail. Well, there's no time to lose. Let's go see what this spectral sign entails. <laughs> The top store was the lair of Cedric Sloan, master prop maker on Bannon's failed production. After Brent Backflip's accident, rumors concerning the prop dumbbells shone the cold, hard light of suspicion directly on the prop master. This would not be the first time a faulty or misused prop would lead to a hospital visit. The prop store. Vital to every production, and this one was no exception. Please do come in, Mr. Bannon. Does the name Cedric Sloan mean anything to you? Not really, should it? Well, perhaps, from what we could dig up, he was the prop master during the making of Dying is Another Man's Job. A very vital role, would you not agree, Mr. Bannon? Uh, I suppose so, yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Not only that, but he was a military man, dishonorably discharged, no family to talk of, no friends, just his work, and then the accident. Yes, yeah, so you're right, I remember now. So, something about him making a prop was too heavy, and then that could have been the reason Brent failed or something. Ah, so you do remember, Mr. Bannon. Well, the stories surrounding Mr. Sloan are intriguing say the very least. We do know that there was no love lost between him and your father. From what we can tell, Cedric Sloan claimed that Mr. Bannon Sr. looked down on him at the rest of the crew, believing he was too good for them. Now, that kind of attitude breeds resentment. And if there's enough resentment, that can attract some very nasty spirits, Mr. Bannon. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not sure any of this is fair on my father. I think, by all accounts, he didn't even know that man existed. It's hard to look down on someone you don't even talk to. But wasn't it true? The props were your father's idea. He insisted the stuntman keep them on him during the climb, despite their encumbrance. I think, I think we can all agree that the character of Percival Perrell would have been a bit lesser if it hadn't been for his signature dumbbells. I challenge you, mate, to look heroic without performing a quick bicep curl. Signature indeed, though, perhaps signing a potential death warrant rather than creating the iconic story your father wanted. After all, with all these props lying around, there was ample opportunity for Cedric Sloan to exact his revenge, if that's what he wanted. Yeah, 
out. It was an accident. That's why everyone decided, didn't they? So. Ah, but was it the truth, Mr. Bannon? No, there's something more sinister at work here. You'd think we need to dig a little deeper to find it out. And maybe about to get some help with that. Oh. oh, are we getting this? Tell me we're getting this. My God! It looks like what a jellyfish would see. On acid. They're showing us something. Some sort of light? Yes, light. There's only one place in this building with lots of lights. The stage. Exactly. Quickly. The departed are not patient. <laughs> The stage is the location of Brent Backflip's failed stunt where he plunged to the ground below. It is situated above the long sealed vault and the dark secrets it contains. This is where the cameras would roll, both figuratively and literally, at least until the installation of bricks. Of course, of course, the spirit would lead us here, the scene of the accident. This is where he wants us to find something. Perhaps the spirit is the unfortunate Brent himself. Uh, that's uh, probably a bit unlikely, mate. Uh, he lives near me. I saw him on Thursday. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was buying a shitload of toilet roll and a jazz mag. Ah, yes. Well, the fall wasn't fatal. Yes. Only to his career. Uh, the inebriated idiot never worked again. Serves him right. Yeah. Wait, this is where the stunt failed, isn't it, Patrick? Yes. He was supposed to be scaling that building when he fell and broke both his legs. I'm sensing that, yes. Uh, I'm getting a bit of uh, tibia over here and a bit of uh, fibula over there. And, ah, uh, yes, patella. I know you're there. OK. Right, Wayne, what are we doing here? Well, this is our final stop, so it must mean something. There's normally something they want us to find, Patrick, OK? Something will answer our questions. Have a look, Patrick. <laughs> Ah, yes, yes, all right. I'm, I'm getting that there's something there beneath the carpet, something important. No, no, no. Oh. No, fit there. Bring it over here, Patrick. It appears to be Brent Backflip's wallet, inexplicably. Unbelievable! The aura, the aura, yes, yes, it's powerful. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna try something there, okay? It's a bit dangerous, but. Don't worry, I have a spirit keeper protecting me from harm. Hmm. Ah, shit. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh. Ah, Patrick. Oh. Patrick, it's me, Brent. Oh, my God. I I'm taking over this vessel. This is a possession. Is that, is that what it is? Oh, God, Christ. OK, are you, are you all right then, there, Wayne? Are you OK? Ah, just elegant friend is safe and well. I'm really using it to cover the name. I wasn't at fault, Patrick. I wasn't at fault. No! Don't you give me that bullshit, <laughs> please, Brent. Me wallet, Pat! Don't call me Pat. Me wallet! Oh, Chris. Take me wallet. Oh. 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 What happened there? What did he say? Not sure. Very confusing. It was very strange. He spoke in an accent I didn't recognise at all. Yeah, but that could happen. Right, yeah, yeah. He said something about the wallet. Check the wallet. He said something about the wallet. Check the wallet. What devilish things could such a role keep it in there? Right. Looks to me like a ten-year sobriety chip. A uh, letter to his loving mother, half-finished. Um, photograph, lots of uh, very attractive men, uh, all looking happy together. Uh, newspaper clipping, local man, champion safety at work. Uh, but what could it all mean? Well, if you ask me, sounds like we were wrong about Brent. Terribly wrong. So what caused the accident, then? Well, I don't know. I didn't bring us here. Seems like we may have hit a dead end there, Patrick. The energy in this space is one of frustration. Perhaps just another unsolved mystery. Damn this curse! Yes, yeah, well, I'm sure we'll have more luck with our next mystery, but first, we'd like to show the viewers at home a clip from a never before aired documentary. Mm. Yes, my father originally ordered it cancelled out of respect. Uh, the footage was itself damaged in the fire. The very fire we'll be investigating in just a minute. So, stand by to play the footage. Oh, Nicely done. 
Harold Repartee, and this is the nation's nightfall report. Tonight we bring you a special program where we take a closer look behind the scenes of a forthcoming television sensation. Masterminded by Graham Bannon, seen here. It's a shame all the film crews were damaged in the fire. Think what we could learn if we could fix them. Entertainment. Bannon has just completed construction on this state-of-the-art studio and production facility. With a price tag into the millions, it's a move that has raised eyebrows across the business world. Rehearsals are now well underway here, and it seems Bannon is quite the taskmaster. However, there have been suggestions that things uh, are not as good. I thought I said not to touch that. Seriously, just leave it alone. Right. Oh, well, yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Just don't do it again. It's certainly unexpected for a family variety act to be catapulted so quickly into the spotlight. But if the executives queuing around the block or anything to go by, these new scripts of his must be really something special. Welcome back to live and spooky Bannon's Fall. Before the break, we explored a number of rooms in this old building, the long abandoned Bannon soundstage. And while the spirit world is ever present, it can only be felt in certain places and at certain times. So what exactly caused the accident then, Wayne? Well, Mr. Bannon, while we did follow some spectral signs during our preliminary investigations, we were unfortunately unable to discover the true cause of the accident so long ago that marked the beginning of Graham Bannon's woes. And normally, the spirit world uses a couple of signs to point us in the right direction before finally revealing their message for us. Yeah, it's a shame we didn't find out what caused the accident. They normally find something in the final room. Communication and conveyance. Indeed, and it's there that this trick lets us down, but it has been known to happen on rare occasions. I am confident, however, that we'll be able to uncover the truth of the fire, the next unlucky event in the production's history. Yes, it was never actually proven at the time, but blame was unofficially placed on Marie Murphy, the costume girl, who sadly was found dead shortly after on these premises. Hopefully tonight, we'll be able to find out exactly why. Oh, planning on finding some clearer talking ghosts, are we, Wayne? <laughs> well, funny you should ask Patrick as you might be the one they're talking to. Uh, thanks to Dr. Ahmed's incredible ingenuity, we now have the ability to cover the rest of the building, not one room at a time, but simultaneously. Oh, yeah. Oh, Alex, if you don't calibrate the spirit jump correctly by the time that bar fills up, Gareth says the polarity will become misaligned, and it'll take a while for it to restabilise and get back up and running again. There's a built-in light service over here, should you find the need for it. Um, and should you run into any darker environments? Excellent, Doctor. Uh, thank you. Ah, no, I'm hearing something. Yes, the great beyond is asking for you, my pet. Come over here. Yes, yes. You're the one we need. I'm quite certain of it. What a pleasure it is to be joined by this lovely creature. At the moment, I saw that I just knew she'd be wanted here. By the spirit, of course. What's your name, darling? My name's Holly. Lovely. And what is it you do normally, Holly? I'm Patrick. Yeah. Mr. Bannon, Mr. Bannon's assistant. I'm his long-suffering, ever-so-understanding assistant. Though, to be honest, it's probably because nobody else wanted the job. Well, I have a feeling that you might even be integral to tonight's event. But don't worry, there is nothing to be nervous about. Look, Dr. Ahmed and I are professionals. We've been doing this for years, and we would never let anything happen to you. Right, then. 
Let's split up, explore the building, following our instincts and the signs that the ghosts leave for us, hoping to uncover some clues as to what really happened in that fire all those years ago. Right, and this is all safe, is it? I mean, I'm not massively keen on the idea of me and my staff having to wander around the building on our own, in the dark, with this poxy thing, climbing up ladders, running downstairs. Sounds to me like a health and safety nightmare. Patrick, calm down. I'm sure everything will be fine. And besides, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Am I right? Absolutely, Mr Bannon. Don't worry, you're in safe hands with us. <laughs> well, all right, good. Excellent. Uh, come now, friends. We have a haunted building to explore and some mysteries to uncover. Downstairs. To the There's a, there's a wall here. Cool. And normally, when you're going low and you hear water, it's like the river sticks. To be in a sort of, if you can see this, in a sort of a, a lighting thing now. <sighs> okay. Can't much longer, can it? I've got. There's um. Can you see this? But we now come down the other side of the building. Not sure I've been here before. It's very dark, I can tell you. But I'm heading down towards. Oh. Um, I don't think I'm very good at this. Okay. We're down. Sacrifice one, or I'll take the last. holds any spiritual energy as well. Normally the bigger part of the equipment tends to hold a much, much bigger presence, which is why the EMF readers go off the charts at times. These were all used back in the day in the cursed show. Graham Bannon, Marie Murphy. Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I think I see some lights. I don't know if you're getting this, but... Reading. Okay, let's head back and see what we can get. Okay. I'll sort of track back the way I came. And see. Okay. Oh, stairs. More stairs. Right. Okay. Other side of the building. 
I'm not sure I should go around that corner, I tell you, because there's some light there and I'm not sure what it is. Um... There shouldn't be any light down here, it's just me with the camera. You can't save them all. Very exciting, but I'm a little bit nervous. Because of the shape of the light, uh, I think I'm going to go towards it. It looks like a warm, welcoming light. All right, my loves, I'm here. Right, Calm down, yeah? Calm down. That's it, good? That's it, good? Yes. Hello. All right, darling. I'm here, okay? I'm here, okay? No, no, no. This isn't what we discussed. Calm, yeah? We're all... No, no. That's not very nice, is it? It's not very nice, is it? Ta very. Ta very. Now, how can I help you? Well, don't go all silent on me. The sulking isn't gonna help, is it? Talk to me. That's better. So, I'm getting peace? Yeah? Is that right? Peace? Turn up for the shit. I'm gonna find a different way. Right, well that's that's mental. Uh, I don't think it's prong. Um prong. Terrifying. I'll feel you for this, but whatever it is, not worth it. And this dust, everything is caked in dust. It's fucking ridiculous.
spirits, are you in here? Spirits, or you in here? Phantom or Spectre or whatever you like to be called. Oh, okay. Uh, guess I better go investigate this then. Uh, okay. Hmm. What have we over here? Uh, typewriter, lamp, boxes, uh, falcon in a little box, uh, books and, um, script. For dying is another man's job. Written by. No. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty much done now. Thank you very much. Um, no more scary things for me, thank you. I will be off. Aha. You've locked the door, haven't you? Very funny. That's very funny. But I will be going. Thank you so so. so please open up. Yes. You're trying to scare me and it's not working. So, you find your fun. Let me out. Who the fuck did that? No, I'm done. Thank you. No more of this bullshit. Woo. One of the hallways this could lead to. Um, any one of the rooms. Okay. <gasps> okay, I just heard that. Did anyone hear that?
guys. Just on three. One, two, three. See? It's fine. It's nothing happened. If anyone finds this later, if I don't get out, here's what I know, or at least what I'm guessing. I seem to have gotten into the projection room. There's some storage over here. On what looks like the remnants of the fire. This is where they burnt the tapes and the, and the scripts. Strange that it's still here after all this time. I mean, I don't want to clean up a haunted building either. As requested, we've gathered all original manuscripts for you, even copies previously taken off site. We hope. I would suddenly want all the copies brought together. Well, too late for that question, I guess now. You know, I wonder if this thing actually works. <gasps> wow! Oh my god, it must have been so cool to watch stuff on this back in the day. <gasps> oh wow! <gasps> so cool. Is that Graham? Or Patrick? Family picnics, trip to the zoo, visiting Great Aunt Ruth just one more time. <laughs> There's no rest for the wicked. Then what do they all have in common? That's right, it's Bannon Brand. Jet setting across the globe. The cosmetics aisle. The salmon industry. You know it. It's Bannon. Other brands have gotten away with poor quality products. Until now. It's so good, I put my Bannon name on it. How could you go anywhere else? You couldn't. Not without Bannon. And that's a Bannon promise you can trust. In fact... Hold off any ghosts. Oh God, what am I doing here? In all my years of being his PA, this has to be the most ridiculous thing I've had to do. This has to be the most ridiculous thing I've had to do. Still, I hope he's all right, I guess. And the others, I just... And the others, I just wish this was over. I just wish this was Look, I don't know what's going on and I don't want to, and I don't want to be here. If that doesn't happen and somebody finds this later, somebody finds this later, I suppose a better sign off. I suppose a better sign off. The battery's dying and this is my only light. This is my only light. My name is Holly. <laughs> Bike that was a ride. Bike that was a ride. Oh, this must be the vault below the stage. Below the stage. Greetings, my friends. If you're still with us, you join me here in the very room where Marie Mayfield took her own life. 
and sealed the fate in these days of war. Welcome to the finale of tonight's live and spooky. Oh, this wasn't exactly as I expected to get here, but it's not on head of for an entity to bring only those with the gift of ten points to them. But of course, only I, Wayne the Spirit Whistle, will be able to communicate with them either in this world or their own. Marie? It is you, isn't it, Marie? Don't fear me, okay, love? I may be powerful. I may be powerful. But I'm also kind. Speak through me, Marie. So I can put you to rest. Oh, we're up against the clock. Let's not upset the advertisers. Uh, so, uh, that's all we have time for. Was actually some spirit shit there. Some spirit there. Okay. <laughs> so Graham Bannon so, was there, Bannon but he didn't was. stop it. But he didn't Holy stop shit! It. Is gold. You struck gold, Wayne. Oh, okay, Marie. I hear you. I understand you. Don't you worry. I'll make sure this film is put to good use. Extremely good use. So I'll leave you to it then, okay, love? No, I'm done. Just let me out and we'll fix it, yeah? No? No. No. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it was just a bit of a laugh. Just entertainment. I didn't mean any harm, honestly. I really didn't. Hey, look, take it. Take it. It's yours. I don't want it. Percy, I can't believe you came. I only came to say goodbye. Goodbye. That's what I said, ain't it? What about your manuscript? I couldn't have done it without you. Do you really mean that? You call me a liar, kid. I can't tell you how happy that makes me. Well, I guess this is it. Must I go? This is the way it has to be. But remember, I'll never forget you, Mary. Do you promise? Cross my heart and hope to die. And dying is another man's job. 